Nina's life had always been kind of peculiar, you could say. During her childhood, then her teenage years, and life after that, there had been multiple cases where she thought, okay, this is it. This is the moment my life is going to fall apart and it's never going to recover. Of course, it did recover with time, even though it started to take longer and longer each time. Most of the things that happened in her life hadn't even made sense, like when she accidentally went to the wrong sleepover and then spent the night at their place. How had that happened, and how did none of the adults figure it out? Even the kids didn't say anything. They just accepted that there was a random kid at their sleepover. There had also been a time when she made a lemonade stand, but it had rolled down the hill and knocked some old men off their feet for some reason. Nina wasn't someone who liked to interact with people, so she hid in a bush and pretended the lemonade stand had no owner. Nina experienced her parents dying at a really young age. They had passed away due to increased alcohol consumption, which led to alcohol poisoning due to being drunk out of their minds. There was no one to help them, and so while Nina had been at school trying to be the perfect student for them and imagining a future where she earned and made a better life for her parents, they had been slithering on the floor, trying to stay alive, but failed in the end. When Nina reached home, she opened the door to an empty house. Usually, she would hear the television blaring or her parents screaming, but today there was nothing. That was the moment Nina knew something was wrong as her heart picked up speed, a panicky breath leaving her as she tried to figure out if her parents were okay or if she was in trouble. Her parents had some sort of resentment towards Nina, though she never knew why. It had been like that since she was a kid, her parents not caring for her, making her do chores that she was too young for, not attending any of the school's events, and, of course, constantly reminding Nina that she wasn't wanted, that she was a burden to them. Even though she didn't know the exact reason why they hated her, she figured it had something to do with the fact that her mom had always thought kids were a waste of space, money, and time. Something she had often expressed in front of Nina as well, saying, if you weren't born, I'd never have kids. Great. She was a kid that her parents hadn't wanted in the first place. She wanted to ask them why they hadn't given her up or adopted her. Why they didn't let her leave if they wanted her to disappear from their lives so bad. At one point, Nina tried running away, but her mom caught her, dragging her back into the house and screaming at her. Her mom had used words that Nina wouldn't dare to repeat. And her mom had said those to a 12-year-old kid. They had most probably not let her run away because they needed Nina to do their chores. Every week, Nina was given a list of tasks that she had to complete. And if she hadn't done any of them, they'd take away her food privileges. Thankfully, they had never raised their hand on Nina. But she often thought about how she'd prefer if they tortured her physically instead of mentally. Nina wasn't sure how much longer she could endure this. It got worse after they caught Nina making a friend at school. Her dad had come to pick her up early because her mom was sick, and they needed someone to take care of her when he noticed someone saying hi to Nina before she left the school gates. As soon as she got into the car, her dad blew up on her, demanding an explanation on why she had made a friend telling her that someone like her should never have friends, that she didn't deserve her. If he found out that Nina was still friends with her after today, he would make sure she would regret it. It scared Nina, so she started to ignore the friend whenever she went to school, thinking about talking to her without her dad finding out, but the threat he made had stuck in her head, not letting her do anything about it. She didn't understand why her dad wouldn't want her to make friends. Didn't they want her getting out of their hair, just like they always told? As a kid, she thought her parents were right and that maybe she didn't deserve to make friends because of everything going on at home. Although, after she had grown up and gone to college, she realized that maybe her parents didn't want her to make friends because they were scared Nina was going to tell someone how they treated her and what they made her go through daily. When she discovered her parents were dead, 
in the living room. She wasn't as shocked as she should have been. At first, she thought they had just passed out from too much alcohol, like they had done multiple times in the past year. So she ignored it and went to her room. But when she came back an hour later to do her chores, she found her parents in the same position as they were before, completely still. This had freaked her out badly. Mom? Dad? Wake up! She tried shaking them, but they didn't reply. She got some water and threw it on their face, but they still hadn't responded. What had happened? Just as she began to freak out, she noticed that none of them were breathing at all. She tried shaking them again, calling their names and screaming in their ears, but she got no response, so she called 911 in a panic. Even after they had arrived and Nina told them everything that had happened, she was still in shock. The paramedics treated her, but she couldn't even feel them. What was she going to do now? She was in her senior year just a couple of months before she had to leave for university. She had gotten accepted to one, planning on majoring in law. She was 18, but how would she afford her expenses until college? Mainly because her mom and dad hadn't let her work anymore, saying she was needed in the house because they didn't want to work. She could live alone. Her life had switched entirely from that day. She was living alone now, in the same apartment where she had seen her parents' lifeless body, where she had suffered from years of psychological abuse. The apartment where she had no freedom whatsoever. With her parents alive, she had to live a certain way. She had to act in a particular manner, speak only when spoken to, and obey the rules made for her. Now that they were out of the picture, Nina realized that she had no idea how to live. She had no one to tell her the rules she had to follow, no chores she needed to get done every day. She could speak whatever, she could do whatever. And for Nina, that was so scary. It's not like she knew how to interact or socialize. Of course, she did. She had gone to school, made friends secretly. And it's not like you can go through 12 years of high school without uttering a single word to anyone. Nina sat at the dining table because she couldn't make herself comfortable sitting in the living room now and opened her laptop. After a week of living through the savings her parents had, she figured she needed to get a job. She could not survive almost four months living here just through her parents' money. It took her an hour or so to finally apply to any place she knew was hiring. Nina knew she couldn't be picky about where she would work, at least not right now. A couple of days later, after a few rejections, she was accepted to work as a cashier in a cafe downtown. She knew that cafe. She had gone there once, behind her parents' backs, of course. They couldn't understand what she was doing there, mainly because their workplace was at the opposite end of town. Four months had passed in a blur, and she had lived a comfortable life with the money she was earning and all the savings from her parents that had legally gone to her. Her parents would be so pissed if they saw her living her life, but they weren't here, so they couldn't do anything about it. For Nina, she was living her best life, going to parties, hanging out with friends, getting good grades, and most of all, acting however she wanted to at home. No more hiding and no more being scared that she would get thrown out to the streets if she didn't agree with them. When the four months were over, Nina moved to college, thankful she was getting out of that house and into the dorms. She couldn't wait. College was everything that she had expected. She made friends and went out a lot, but she also paid much attention to her studies. She knew how much grades mattered for getting a good job, even if people kept saying they didn't. Every time she had told her friends that she couldn't hang out with them because she had to study, they said to her that grades would not matter, that she just needed a bit of natural talent to win over the crowd and the law firm, that grades were just a sheet of paper. Nina didn't believe that at all. She knew what she wanted to do. She wanted to get into a master's program to specialize in children's welfare in family law. Her experiences and childhood motivated her to pursue this career. She wanted to help children who tried to fight for a better life and a better childhood. And what better way than to provide them legal care? Nina also knew that she needed to get into a good law firm 
and a good master's program to achieve her goals. And for all of that, she needed her grades. That's why she spent so much of her Friday nights on her desk, trying to learn all the material for the week. College was also where she met the love of her life, Lucas. Lucas was an extraordinary man in the eyes of Nina. He knew what he wanted, and she knew he'd do everything in his power to achieve those goals. That's what had attracted Nina in the first place. Lucas had told the class that he wanted to be a criminal lawyer, reasons that he hadn't mentioned left hanging in the air. He had also told the class where he wanted to go for his master's, what he wanted to achieve, and how he had everything planned out. Most of their class had thought he was a little crazy because who plans this ahead? They didn't do that. They were just here to get their bachelor's degrees. However, Nina sat in the row behind him, jaw dropped in awe. He was exactly like her, and she knew he had reasons to pursue this path the way she had. Nina thought it was easily noticeable in his body language and expression, but when she talked to some of her friends about it, she realized it wasn't normal to observe a person this much in depth. She had done it her whole life. She had to. Those signs told her how her parents were feeling that day, what she needed to prepare herself for, and how she needed to act. Apparently, other people didn't have to worry about that with their parents. Lucky Nina. She hadn't gotten the courage to talk to Lucas. It had been a week. She would stare at him in every class, trying to figure out a way she could strike up a conversation without looking weird. But she had come up with nothing, and her friends were no help at all. There was a day when she almost managed to sit next to him, but her friends messed that up as well, as she expected. Lucas had always been super quiet, especially in class. She hadn't seen him talk to anyone in class except for his one and only friend, James. While Lucas was a lean, tall guy who was as pale as a ghost, messy black hair falling on his eyes all the time, usually in oversized shirts and hoodies, James was the complete opposite. He was almost the same height as Lucas, but way more buff. His muscles poked out from the tight shirt he wore everywhere, a smirk constantly on his face while his eyes twinkled in a way that attracted most of the girls on the campus. Nina wasn't part of James' little fan club because her focus was always on Lucas. The two were inseparable, always next to each other even when they weren't in class. But there was a day when James hadn't attended any of the classes, so Lucas had been sitting alone in all of the three classes they had that day. Nina's plan was simple, sit next to him and try to strike up a conversation. But she hadn't really taken into account how annoying and obvious her friends could be because as soon as she was going to enter the row Lucas had been sitting at, her friends called out her name from the last row, beckoning Nina to come over there and sit with them. She was thankful that they cared enough to save her a seat, but she really didn't need that seat right now. Still, to make herself look not desperate, she stuttered before nodding, leaving the row, but just before she had turned, she could swear she saw Lucas look at her and giving her a slight smirk. Did he know what her plan was? It would be really embarrassing if he did know, considering he had also noticed Nina staring at him a couple of times, her cheeks turning a shade of bright pink every time she was caught. However, Nina was motivated, so that night she told her friends not to save her a seat and decided that she was either going to sit by Lucas in class or at least strike up a conversation with him in the hallway. She went to her first class, super motivated, and found James sitting next to Lucas, both of them engrossed in what seemed like a very serious conversation. However, when she looked a bit closer, she saw a comic book between them, James constantly pointing to it while whispering very harshly to Lucas, while all Lucas did was shake his head in what seemed like a disgusted expression. Nina noticed that while James sat on Lucas's right side, the seat on his left was empty. So she rushed there without a thought, not allowing anyone else to sit next to him. As soon as she sat down, the boys' conversations halted. Usually, everyone sat precisely where they had on the first week of class, surrounded by their friends, and usually the seat next to Lucas would always be empty. 
When they both noticed her sitting there, a smirk formed on Lucas's face while James gave her his infamous smile and greeted her in a very charming manner, she had to admit. She knew why the girls would appear to be dying for James's attention, but she was here for his best friend. Why are you smirking, dude? James had asked Lucas, confused by his behavior. But to be fair, Nina was a little confused, too. Lucas just shook his head and focused back on the comic. Just before the lecture started, Lucas leaned towards her before muttering, Try not to stare this time. To say that Nina had turned pink all over would be an understatement. They had passed slips the entire lecture, trying to stay as quiet as they could when they got a particularly funny and snarky note. This soon became a routine. They'd constantly sit together and pass notes to each other the entire time, some flirty, some snarky, but all of them full of adoration for the other person. At one point, Lucas had even ditched his regular seat next to James because the road didn't have enough space for Nina that day, and that was something. Nina's heart had fluttered so much that day, she was sure it would leave her body and fly away any second. Soon the notes got boring, so Lucas moved and asked Nina for her number, which changed everything. Ever since that day, they had been texting each other constantly, even shooting a couple texts during lectures. James and Nina's friends had noticed how attached they had gotten to each other and took every opportunity they could to tease them until they became beat red. That teasing brought everyone together, and they all started hanging out as a group. Nina, her friends, Alexa, Stacy, and Angie, along with James and Lucas. Alexa and James had even started dating at one point, and Stacy and Angie would constantly joke about how they hated being the only single ones in the group, pretending to date each as a joke. Lucas and Nina's relationship kept blooming throughout college, and they kept growing stronger and cheesier, according to their friends. Every time you'd see the two of them together, Lucas's hand would always be on Nina's back while she leaned a bit into his chest. Alexa and James had broken up after a year, but the group stayed the same. They had broken up due to different plans for the future, but they were still good friends, and the group was still intact, now closer than ever. The girls had all been the bridesmaids, and James was the best man at their wedding. Yes, they had ended up getting married. Since Lucas and Nina had been dating since their first year, they had dated for over six years before Lucas proposed. They had been to Paris for vacation, the first vacation they had taken without the other four. The trip was meant to be a surprise for Lucas since his birthday fell during the summer, but she had to tell him so he could take a day off of work. And so they had known a month before they had been planning on going. On their last night in Paris, they decided to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower, saving the best for the last, and that's when Lucas pulled out the ring, surprising Nina, especially because this entire thing was supposed to be for Lucas. Lucas had even asked some random stranger to secretly record the proposal while Nina was busy fixing her makeup. He knew their friends would bite his head off if he didn't provide them with a video, mainly because all of them had helped him plan this ever since he got to know about it. But more than that, he wanted it so he could look at it whenever he wanted. Every single time he watched it, he wondered how he had managed to get so lucky. He'd never be able to figure that out. The wedding was phenomenal, with blues and whites everywhere. It had been everything they both had dreamt of. Even though Nina didn't have any family at her wedding, her friends had made up for it, and she never felt so loved. The wedding ended, and they both felt that life had opened up a new chapter for them, something they would cherish forever. Their lives had started since then. Both of them got jobs in respectful firms. Lucas became a criminal lawyer as he planned, and Nina became a family lawyer that worked for children's welfare. Nina also discovered that Lucas became a criminal lawyer for almost the same reason that Nina had become a family lawyer. His father had been falsely blamed for a crime that ruined all their lives. Done by one of the influential friends his father had since he had been involved in politics. Nina learned that his father had to serve half of his life in jail for something he didn't do just because the lawyers were too scared to go against such a powerful politician. 
It raged a fire in Nina's heart, so big that she had to shed tears of anger when Lucas had told her. She shed tears for his father losing such a significant time of his life, for Lucas having to live with the knowledge that his innocent father was behind bars because people were too afraid to support him. She shed tears for everything they had lost, including her own childhood due to an unjust system. Nina remembered talking to a school counselor about what she was going through at home, but he had just called her parents to confirm that they would actually admit it to him. Instead, Nina had her food privileges taken away for almost three days, locked in her room, sobbing till she passed out. However, their current life was their dream life, something both of them didn't think they'd ever get, but they couldn't be more grateful. It had been almost three years since they married, and their life was perfect. They still went on dates. They still cared for each other the way they did when they first started dating. And of course, the spark was still there. They always planned surprises for each other, having no reason other than, I want to make you happy and because I love you. But this surprise was special. Nina had just gotten promoted and wanted to go home and celebrate with her husband. What better way to do that than to go and surprise him? She quickly left work, got some of their favorite snacks, ordered takeout to reach their house, and was on the way home, excited to the point to where she had no trouble driving without squealing and shouting. There was nothing that could ruin this day for her, or so she thought. As soon as she opened the door to their home, she heard laughing and a movie playing. It seemed like Lucas had invited a friend over. He did that sometimes, and he didn't know what she was playing. He had no way of knowing, so she wasn't mad. She could just order more food and celebrate with him after his friend had left. So she placed her bag by the shelf on the front door and went to greet both of them. But her words got stuck in her mouth as the friend turned her head and looked at her. No, this couldn't be happening. There was no way. Nina started hyperventilating shaking even more when the man smirked at her as if he was amused by the reaction she was giving. Her ears began ringing so bad she could barely hear her husband come to her, ask her if she was okay, and ask the other bazillion questions he tried to ask. All this time, Nina's gaze was stuck on the man sitting in the living room. Who's that? she asked, her voice shaking. What is he doing here? Lucas was confused. He didn't know why Nina was reacting like this. He's my friend Cameron. He joined my firm a month ago, and we instantly hit it off, so I invited him home for some drinks. Oh, why are you home early, by the way? Is everything okay? Lucas's eyes burrowed in concern, and it usually would have swooned because of how caring he was, but she couldn't this time, not when Lucas had brought her stalker into their home. Cameron Gray. This was his name. He had been in the same law firm as Nina once before she changed and started at the one she was currently in. He seemed like a nice guy with a charming smile, incredibly friendly and always ready to help. When Nina started at the firm, she didn't know anyone. None of her law schoolmates had been working there, so she was completely alone. That's when Cameron stepped in. He was always finding ways to make things easier for Nina volunteering to let her enter his team and pushing her into charge of most cases. There was no denying that Nina was exceptionally good at her job, but it still seemed a little fishy to treat her so well when she had barely started as a lawyer. She had expressed her concern to Lucas, but he had brushed it off, telling Nina she was probably overthinking it and that he was perhaps treating her so well because she was really good at her job. Lucas was always rational, so she knew he had probably thought the situation through and let it be. She accepted the help, took on more cases, and felt she was close to getting promoted in less than a year, which was impossible to happen. But Cameron had made her feel like that. However, he turned from pleasant to obsessive. One night, they were both working late on a case. Most of the people from the office had left and they were in Nina's office when Cameron asked her out and offered to take her on a very instant date. To say Nina was shocked would have been a lie. She double-checked her hand and found her wedding ring still on her left hand, glistening under the light in her office. 
Had Cameron not seen it? Or was he purposely ignoring it? I already have a husband, Cam, she had said that night. They had gotten close enough to use nicknames with each other. Was that it? Had that given Cameron the wrong idea? She pointed to her finger as she spoke with a firm yet apologetic look. He looked at it for a second before he shrugged and leaned back towards the chair. I know, I saw, but what he won't know won't hurt him, he said, smirking at her shocked face. How disgusting could this man be? First, he asked her out even though he knew she was married, and now he was suggesting that she cheat on Lucas. She gagged internally before rushing him out, telling him he wasn't invited in here anymore before shutting the door in his face. She decided to stay away from him. He was screaming for trouble at this point. She wanted to tell Lucas, but he was in Spain with his family for a few months. His dad had fallen ill, and the doctors had told him he only had three to four months to live. So Lucas flew there, handing in leave at work. He wanted to spend as much time with his father as possible. Nina understood that, and she had no problem with him being away for so long. She knew how much he loved his family, especially his father, and there was no way she would ruin his last few months with his dad, especially if she could handle the situation, so she decided to let it be. However, the situation had not been handled. Instead, it had only gotten worse from there. She had Cameron follow her everywhere, even if she went to the washroom. It felt like he was around everywhere in the firm, no matter where she went. He was there. He had even tried to touch her at one point, but she had punched him in the face and run away. She had stayed at Angie's house that day, the entire friend group coming over to have a sleepover to comfort Nina. They had all been furious and for excellent reason. James and Stacy had even volunteered to beat the man up, but Nina didn't want any trouble. They asked her if she had told Lucas, but she just shook her head. She couldn't. She'd feel too guilty. She didn't get to say goodbye to her family, no matter how much they madly mistreated her. And she wasn't going to steal that from Lucas either. She knew he booked the first ticket before she could return. No, that wasn't an option. She explained why she couldn't tell him and why it meant so much to her that Lucas came back when he felt he was ready to let go of his father. Just like she expected, they hadn't understood it entirely but they understood where she was coming from, so they didn't force her to tell him as long as she came to them if things got too serious. They were all aware that Nina tended to hide what she was going through just because she thought she'd burden the other person with her problems. Even though Nina had agreed to that condition, she wasn't exactly adhering to it because things had gotten worse and she hadn't told anyone about it. Cameron had now started following her everywhere even outside of work. He thought he was being sly about it, hiding in bushes when Nina would look over, trying to stay behind her enough so she couldn't see him. But he didn't realize that Nina had grown up looking over her shoulder. Cameron also did an awful job at hiding, which didn't help his case either. She knew how to make sure someone was looking at every single one of her actions all the time. She did make sure not to go into her house every night, Cameron had followed her home every single night, leaving after around five to ten minutes. She wasn't sure what he was trying to do, but she didn't want to find out either. She always carried pepper spray and a taser in her bag, and every night she'd lead Cameron to her old house, the one she stayed in when she was a kid. She'd then call an Uber as soon as he had left, grabbing her pepper spray tightly in her hand until she was safely inside her house. Since it had gotten this extreme, Nina started experiencing severe paranoia, affecting her life significantly. Cameron didn't even leave her alone in her dreams, haunting them every night until she woke up screaming and covered in sweat. One night, he had run after her when she was getting into the house, trying to enter the house with her. Still, Nina was quick, so she sprayed him in the eyes before running in and closing all four locks she had installed on the door immediately dialing James's number, telling him to come there and bring the girls as well. Cameron had been banging on the door, trying to get in the house until James had gotten there with the girls. 
They saw what was happening and recognized the situation and the guy before jumping on him discreetly, knocking him on the ground. James sat on him, throwing punches at his face until he was bloody and bruised, the girls ushering him inside. They entered the house to see Nina sitting on the couch, curled into a ball, hands covering her eyes, eyes shut, and sobbing uncontrollably while swinging back and forth. It took nearly an hour to calm down, enough so she could tell them what had happened, apologizing for not telling them sooner and breaking the promise. They shut her up, telling her she didn't need to worry about that and that all that mattered was that she was safe. After hours of trying to convince Nina, they finally managed to convince her to fill a restraining order against Cameron, especially because she had just told them that she had proof that she was being stalked. She took pictures and videos of him following her as much as she could without being seen by Cameron. With the help of those videos and photographs, they managed to file a restraining order. The week after that had been relatively calm. She had quit her job. Cameron was no longer following her, and Lucas was returning a week later. It seemed like everything would be okay now, and her life was finally calming down, coming to a halt after the roller coaster had gained too much speed. When Lucas came home the next week, she sat down with him and told him everything that had happened, from the start to the end not leaving out a single detail. He was concerned, asked her why she hadn't told him, and hugged her tight when he heard the reasoning. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I'll always be there for you, okay? Never forget that, my love. He had told her when she finished talking. They cried in each other's embrace, Lucas promising to never let that man come near her again. But he had just brought him into their home willingly. That's Cameron, Lucas, the guy I have a restraining order against. Lucas froze and turned towards the man before looking back at Nina with furrowed brows. His name isn't Cameron. He's Jaden. He works with me. I think you're mixing them up, babe. He didn't believe her. She tried telling him that this was Cameron, that he was lying to all of them. But Cameron or Jaden just turned the tables on her instead. He got up from the couch, a hurt expression on his face that Nina knew was fake, before addressing them. Why is your wife blaming me for stalking her, Lucas? What is this man? Is this why you called me over? To make a joke of me? Nina had to admit Cameron was a pretty good actor, even though she believed him for a second. Lucas started apologizing to Jaden, telling him Nina was probably feeling sick and not taking her words to heart before dragging her into the kitchen. What the heck, Nina? Why would you treat a guest like that? He screamed, rubbing his hands over his face. A guest? That man ruined my life for months, and I'm, I'm the bad one here? She felt frustrated. Why didn't he believe her? He believed a guy he barely knew over his wife? She had pictures, but that phone had fallen and cracked, so the screen didn't work anymore. She tried racking her brain, thinking of any way she would be able to prove that this was Cameron, but it just made her angrier. She didn't know what to do, how to make him believe it was really him. Why did she have to go to such lengths to prove something like this to her husband of three years and a boyfriend of six? It was ridiculous, and Nina didn't have the energy to deal with all of this, so she grabbed her purse and started walking toward the door. Where are you going? Lucas asked, grabbing her wrist. She snatched her wrist back. Somewhere I know I will be supported and believed since I can't seem to get that from my husband in such a critical time, she said as she opened the front door, turning back to say, the least you can do is make sure he doesn't leave until I'm at Angie's before walking out. She left the house hurriedly, ensuring that Cameron wasn't following her to Angie's house. As soon as she reached there, she called Angie to open the door, voice shaking while rubbing her arms, trying to stop herself from shaking and due to the cold and shock. Angie opened the door to find Nina on her doorstep, barely managing to keep herself together. Ushering her in, Angie got her comfortable on the couch, wrapping her in blankets and going to make a hot chocolate. Can you tell the others as well? I need all of you to be here tonight, Angie heard just as she went to the bathroom. She knew what this meant. 
Something was really wrong because Nina only gathered all of them this way when she couldn't handle it on her own. Nodding her head, Angie proceeded to the kitchen, grabbing her phone from the counter and calling all of them to her house. What about Lucas? Do you want him here? Angie asked. Even though she was almost 100% sure she had come to her house and probably didn't need Lucas, just as she expected, Nina responded negatively, telling her to call everyone except her husband. Angie quickly got the hot chocolate ready and handed it to Nina just as they heard the doorbell ring. She opened the door to find all four of her friends standing at the door, looking like they had just rushed here in whatever state they had been in since Alexa was in her pajamas while James was wearing his famous club outfit. They ran in as soon as they heard Nina whimper, tears streaming down her face. What's wrong? Is everything okay? Who do we need to beat up? All these questions came to her together, along with a bunch more that Angie had to answer while telling everyone to calm down and let Nina speak. Nina finally started speaking, taking deep breaths in between to calm herself down. She told them everything that happened, the surprise, what she came home to, how Lucas blamed her, and how she left. There was no detail that she left behind, and by the end, all of them were fuming. How could Lucas do that? How could he believe that guy over you? James asked, angry at how stupid his best friend was being. After spending the whole night comforting Nina, trying to get her mood better, eating ice cream, trying to come up with a solution, and ignoring all of Lucas's calls, they managed to take leave for Nina to use her sick days because this was something she needed to recover from as well. It was around 2 a.m. when the doorbell to Angie's house rang. All of them stood, glancing at each other before James put a hand behind him, gesturing all of them to stay back as he looked through the peephole to see who it was. Releasing a frustrated sigh, he opened the door to reveal disheveled-looking Lucas staring at them. As soon as he saw Nina, he rushed in and hugged her, but she pushed him away, looking at him with anger and betrayal in her eyes, a look that Lucas had never thought would be directed towards him. What was that for? Why are you being so rude, Nina? First, the disrespect towards the guest and now this? What has gotten into you? He asked, but he heard a scoff from behind him before Nina could reply. Turning, Lucas looked behind to see his friends looking at him like they wanted to kill him this very second. Lucas, we know you mean well, but what the hell? Alexa said, coming forward, her arms crossed over her chest. All of them took turns screaming at Lucas, telling him how pathetic he was acting, believing a stranger over his wife. Confused, Lucas asked them why they were mad at him when they exploded. You weren't even there. How do you guys know it's the same guy? He asked, exasperated. Why were they all ganging up on him? Because we were there when she was going through that, Lucas. We held her when she was shaking so bad she could barely breathe. So don't tell us whether we should believe Nina because we knew she'd never be wrong about this. Stacy shouted, her words cutting into Lucas. James took out his phone while Stacy was screaming at Lucas and had been scrolling through it the entire time. Nina was confused, but she knew not the question. So she focused back on Stacy. James brought up some pictures from his phone, shoving the phone towards Lucas. Is this the guy? Your friend, Jaden? Is that him? It was. The picture showed Nina pretending to take a selfie while Cameron or Jaden stood at the back staring straight into the camera. Yeah, it's... I mean, how did... What? Lucas stumbled over his words and swiped through all the pictures showing Cameron stalking Nina in different locations on different days, the last one being the video of the night that Cameron tried to break in. I sent these to my phone that night to make sure we had backup proof in case something happened to Nina's phone. Guess it came in handy. Lucas didn't know what to say. He was speechless. He kept repeating the video, showing how scared Nina had been and how much of a jerk Lucas himself had been tonight. God, what was he thinking? How could he not have paid more attention to that, knowing how much this event impacted her? He could have asked Jaden to excuse them for a bit before he got too comfortable that he started interrupting their conversation. He really had messed up big time. 
He tried his best to apologize in all ways, but that was not the time. She gave him the silent treatment, and to be fair, she really needed that space after seeing her stalker, which was very triggering, as she had barely recovered from that. Secondly, her husband, her own partner, not believing her, knowing how sensitive she is about this, knowing the background and how she was impacted. She felt so betrayed and hurt. Lucas understood that and gave her space because she'd shut him down even if he tried again. She woke up to the smell of blueberry pancakes. Wait, for what? Why did her house smell like pancakes? She was not complaining. They smelled heavenly. But what was the occasion? She scratched her head, trying to recall what had happened. That would lead to this, as she put her hair up in a bun and started to head towards the kitchen. The first thing she saw was her husband arranging a tray with pancakes and coffee that he specifically made for her. And she even saw a mini bouquet that he got for her with her favorite flowers and tulips. Nina melted from all the softness in her heart. Why was he so cute? She understood why he was doing this and would give him a big hug, but she stopped as she remembered what had happened the day before. She understood his intentions and didn't interrupt him while trying to hide her smile as she watched him come into the living room with a tray carrying her breakfast and beautifully arranged flowers. And he sat beside her and took a deep breath. He apologized to Nina again, but this time you could see the sincerity through his words and actions too. Since he wasn't sure if he would word his apology correctly, he wrote it out. But then it turned into a letter he could not stop writing, and he shed quite a few tears while doing so, which was visible through the wet stains that made the ink bleed. Reading that letter, Nina tore up too, overwhelmed by the sincerity and heartfelt letter. She didn't need it to feel at peace, just him saying it was enough to give her the reassurance she needed. The letter was definitely going the extra mile, but she was happy about it. Seeing Lucas express himself and his love and concern for Nina being so well written, she ran to hug him because he had left the room after leaving the letter in her hands in embarrassment and fear. But the tension in his shoulders lifted away when she hugged him. He embraced her even more tightly with the biggest smile. Those two might have shed more tears again. Gosh, they were so in love. Maybe they're right when they say conflicts aren't necessarily bad every single time. Some way or the other, they could end up strengthening relationships better than anything, which was the case for these two. After that wholesome morning, Lucas had planned a day for them at the amusement park so it could help them wash away stress and relieve their burdens, especially after the recent incident. It felt like it would be an excellent way to make Nina feel better, especially because she loves adventure. Initially, he wanted to surprise her, but too much had happened already, and he didn't want to make her feel anxious. So after she said yes, they got ready and left for the amusement park in the late afternoon. While Nina was all about the extreme and scary rides, Lucas wasn't so fond of them, but he gave in for the sake of Nina. Surprisingly, he actually grew into liking them. What he was absolutely unbeatable at, though, was the arcade games. Even if it was a planned gimmick, he could outsmart them and gain a continuous streak of winning the bigger toys at fairs and amusement parks. It was charming because he put his all into playing those games just so that he could win them for his wife. Doing the corniest and cutest things, they both looked at each other to find the other blushing and having the biggest smiles on their faces. Nina and Lucas are cute couples who make you feel so single, but also so happy for them because they're so adorable. Even people at the amusement park had noticed them being cute together and secretly wished it had been them instead. They came home from the amusement park, sore and sweaty, and rushed to take a shower. The menu for the day had been decided in the car by both of them. It had mostly been decided by Nina since Lucas let her choose whatever she wanted. Ultimately, Nina had chosen Thai food, and even though Lucas wasn't a big fan of them, he'd do anything to keep Nina happy, which involved eating Thai food with her. Their date night had been crashed by their friend group arriving at their house, digging into what they had ordered for just two people and demanding that they order more. 
You thought you'd be able to enjoy a whole day without us butting in? Ha <laughs> ha, you're funny, Nina heard James say. But she couldn't see him because her face was smooched against Alexa's shoulder, who was hugging her so tight Nina could barely breathe. When Alexa finally let her go and they got more food delivered, things started to look calmer and much more peaceful in Nina's opinion. They played an animated movie called Inside Out at Lucas's request. Nina looked at all of them mid-movie, so confused they stopped eating like hungry animals, completely engrossed in the movie. That's when Nina realized how lucky she was to have such an amazing husband and such amazing friends. And as she was about to drift to sleep, she felt a kiss placed on her forehead while she felt herself vow that she was never going to lose these people 